Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the Texas USA 2013 series. The topic is Basic Principles of Progression. Presented by Jesus on the 9th of November 2013 in Austin, Texas, USA. This is Session 1, Part 1. Well, before you can change anything, you must first face the truth. But before you can face the truth, you've got to know the truth. about yourself. So, the very first thing we need to start to think of doing is to want to know the truth about ourselves, whether we're awake or we're asleep. It's immaterial. We want to, we want to get to a point where we have a desire to know the truth. Once we have a desire to know the truth, a true desire to know the truth, God, through a series of processes and through our emotional condition, can show us the truth. So, for example, when you wake up feeling ashamed, there is a truth being shown to you. That something happened in your sleep state that you're ashamed of. That's the truth. If you wake up feeling scared, that's the truth being shown to you. There's something in your sleep state that you're frightened of. Right? That happened in your sleep state. Now, if you pray about that particular thing, God, through a series of events and through a series of things that happen to you, including what happens in your dreams and what happens in your experiences when you're asleep, will be able to show you what's happening. But you've got to be open to it. Otherwise, you won't get shown. But you can get shown quite easily, which is what happened with yourself, Si. Right? You wanted to know the truth, and as soon as you wanted to know the truth... Yeah, and I remember when, you when Selena first raised the issue in that discussion that we had, and remember I said to you last night how your face went really grey and you went out of your body while she was speaking. Like, and I'm watching, so Selena was sitting over here uh, in our discussion and you were sitting over there, and Selena's asking me a question about her sleep state, and I'm look watching Sai. <laughs> and I'm going, yeah, there's, there's what, what she's bringing up now it's got a big effect on him because he's tuning out, he's zoning out, he fa his face went grey even like, and he sort of went into that real zoned out spacey state that people go into that I observe in many of you often. And, uh, and you can see that yeah, there's something that really troubles him here. Does that make sense? Now to Sai's credit, he wanted to know what was going on. And over the next day or so, he starts receiving dreams which is actually you telling you in your awake state what's happening in your sleep state many times or what the problem is emotionally. All right? So many of our dreams are you setting up an event where you tell yourself something that you become conscious of in your awake state. Selena, you want to just, if we grab the mic. So if he hadn't been <clears throat> open to that, how would it have taken me a long time to get there on my own? If I have he been hadn't working have been, on it for quite a while already. If he hadn't have been open. Yeah, if he yes. simply wasn't going to go there. Correct. Because he was... Well, you know the relation in terms of your relationship, so, and if you don't mind me talking about it more no, clearly. not at all. So here's Selena, and here's Sai, S and S. Does that mean they're the double S or the SS? Well, better not call them SS there. Maybe we just get away with that. I'm not saying you're a good star or something like that. Um, so here we have a male and a female in a relationship. If the male is doing things in his sleep state that he never wants to become aware of, and the female is involved in some way in those particular events, right, then can you see that she has to be closed to also seeing the issue in her awake state? Mm -hmm. But as soon as one of them starts feeling there is an issue, and Selena, you started feeling there was an issue first oh, some time ago. For quite a while, yeah. I was waking up afraid. I knew something. So, how long have you been feeling there's yeah. an issue? Oh, 
two months. Two or three months, okay. So, yeah. And clenching my teeth at night for a long time. So you're waking up afraid. Oh, oh pain. And, and, and in pain, waking up feeling yeah. quite afraid, waking up sometimes feeling ashamed. So waking up feeling a few, a few emotions. So you know there's a problem mm -hmm. then. So you were aware of the problem first. Yep. And that's why you asked the question. But then when I started stating what could be happening, I didn't tell you both what was happening. I just said, this is you telling you that there's something going on. As soon as that started happening, so I started having an opening to the possibility of something going on. Now, if he refused to open to the possibility of what was going on, you can still go through the process, couldn't you, to see what was going on. Mm. I, but I really believed it was just me, all me. Okay, then this, yeah. but if you think about your emotional preconditioning, this is from, as we've discussed, as I've discussed with you, from mm -hmm. a child, this is something you have believed most of your life, mm -hmm. that if something goes wrong, it's my fault. So, <laughs> does that make sense? Yep. Oh, and yeah. And so this emotional preconditioning would have caused you probably to feel quite distressed for many years even before you mm -hmm. might come face to face with the fact that there's a problem. What generally happens, though, for the majority of relationships is eventually the person who feels there's a problem right from the start or from a certain point in time, over a period of years, they become aware of their behaviour in their awake state. Right? And so, therefore, they do finish up seeing that there is a problem. Right? Of course, if you could be aware of the behaviour in the sleep state, you'd know straight away, right? which, is, which is what the process is you've gone through. Mm -hmm. Yep. But your emotional preconditioning caused you to then feel that it was your fault that you feel this way rather than something that Sai might be doing that involved you. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. yeah, I was extremely grateful that he had that experience. Exactly, because, oh, it, because it if he didn't... It was a huge relief for me. Yeah. If he didn't, you might have continued to blame yourself for quite some yeah, time. Yeah, I think, I think that's true. Waking up feeling a certain way, not understanding why. Yeah. And, uh, and if he was unwilling to face the issue, it would have required you working through your emotional preconditioning first before you would have ever seen what was going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So this is where if both parties are brave, mm -hmm. they'll be able to face the issues of what's really going on. Yeah. And there is a lot more sexual infidelity in the spirit world than there is on earth. That's the reality. 